Hey guys, this is Philip Frogs, certified Ableton trainer and Point Blank instructor. In these videos, we're going to be looking at some of the latest features in Ableton Live 9.5. If you want to learn more Ableton techniques, make sure you check out our courses at pointblanklondon.com. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to use the Convolution Reverb Pro in a creative manner for sound design and mixing purposes. Since version 9, Ableton comes loaded with Max for Live. You probably all noticed that, but if you haven't yet installed Max for Live, it's highly important you do so because you get a whole lot more tools to work with audio effects, instruments, and MIDI effects. Max for Live is a bridge between two applications Max MSP and Ableton Live. It just opens so many doors. And part of the Max Essential pack, we got given a new reverb in Ableton Live, the Convolution Reverb Pro. I'm going to load that into a new return track, like so. Convolution Reverbs are the latest technology in artificial reverb. They sound way warmer, way more natural than the reverbs we had in the 80s and the 90s. They use an audio file called an impulse response. And basically you can see that audio file right there inside that Convolution Reverb Pro. This reverb comes loaded with a lot of presets. They're incredible. Real places, spring reverbs, plates. Slightly more CPU hungry than the integrated reverb in Ableton Live, but it's way better. So instead of using one of these presets, we're gonna use a sound from the track to color up some of the elements of the track with that sound and also add a sense of space. Obviously, it needs to be all wet because it's on the return track. Now let me introduce you to that track, I created it specially for that demo. James, one of our students, gave me a few samples the other day, so I used that. That's the initial sample I started with. Alan Oakshu, Mystic Voyage. Great, so I took that, I loaded it into a sampler. There it is. I sampled and I then looped around a specific area of the sample to get that shimmery kind of sound. I added an operator underneath. Could also have a little bit of LFO. James also gave me a great breakbeat. I cut it up and there it is. Added a few chords on top. And that's a good starting point for a track. So. We're going to use the sample and the sound of the sample to create that impulse response. Let me take off that operator and the LFO. So this is how it sounds. Sounds great, but what I'm going to do is detune it. So I'm going to go up five semitones on my sampler. And I'm going to grab that as audio. So let's create a new audio track. There it is. Open the IO section and target the sampler track in the input. Enable record and start. And that's about the length I'm after. So I'm gonna boost up the level a little bit so I can have a nice level in my reverb. And I'm gonna also EQ the bass out just to make it a little cleaner. There it is. Let's right click on the name of the track, freeze it, right click again and flatten it to print these changes onto the audio file. That's it, I've got my impulse response. I'm gonna to go to my Convolution Reverb Pro, grab the sound and drag it right in there. There it is. Sweet, let's reset that little simpler. Put the LFO back, bring the pitch down, minus four, and add the operator. Great stuff. So, let's just apply it to the beat first so we can tweak it and make it happen properly. So. Straight away here, the sound of the lead here inside the reverb. Let's craft it. There's a, a number of options we have here in the Convolution Reverb Pro. Let's fade it out, shorter, pretty cool there. Let's shorten it a bit. Fantastic. You see, the sound of my sampler, the sound of that lead is printed onto the beat. Let's staccato the beat a little bit. 
be cleaner that way, yeah? So already, there's a great integration of the beat with the actual sampler, listen. Let's push it a bit. Let's turn it off. Let's now apply that reverb to the actual sound itself. Hear that shimmering. I probably wouldn't set the Convolution Reverb Pro the same way uh, for the beat and for the simpler. I want it slightly shorter for the beat, slightly thicker for uh, the simpler. So I'm just going to duplicate that Convolution Reverb Pro here and use it differently for both these elements. Good stuff. So let's go to this guy here and enable it in the send. Slightly warmer here. I want it slightly warmer, slightly thicker. Maybe a little louder as well. A bit of a ring to it now. Oh, that sounds lovely. So there's obviously a number of options. We can dump, dampen the sound. Maybe add a little bit of chorusing, but a modulation to it. Lovely. Listen to it without. And with. It's lovely. It's quite spectral. It's tuned in. It's actually in tune with the actual sample. Now with the beat. Lovely. You see, the potential here is huge. It's like recycling sounds within the track to create the space around the track and tune it as well. So, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. This is the kind of technique we learn here at Point Blank in the classroom.